As most of our viewers will remember, Our Lady of the Angels Parish mm -hmm. is the location of the very tragic fire that took the lives of 92 children and three mm -hmm. sisters back in 1958. Mm -hmm. Now there's an effort to uh, bring life back to that uh, church and that neighborhood. Tell us a little bit about the origins of that idea. Well, the uh, parishes have been joined in that neighborhood, but the buildings are all still there. And uh, I had known about the Franciscan Friars of Renewal started by Father Benedict Gretschel before I came to Chicago. And as I was looking at the different places where the church is, even when there aren't many Catholics, how do we be present, sometimes with a school, sometimes another way, that neighborhood uh, is a rather dangerous place. And I thought it was almost a natural for a group that just wants to be present to the poor and to people who are in some danger often. So they came and they were interested in, and uh, Father Bob Lombardo very generously came and uh, through his contacts and his goodwill and his uh, kind of joyful Christian presence, uh, he has recreated something that is, a, not recreated, created something truly original that puts the church right there as a symbol of hope, an oasis of peace in a very difficult place. Great. Well, our viewers will have a chance to meet Father Lombardo right now through a video package prepared for us by our radio and TV director, Mr. Jim Dish. A charter school now operates on the site of the Our Lady of the Angels school fire that occurred more than a half century ago. Next door, in front of the rectory, is a memorial to the fire victims. Across the street, the former convent is used as a retreat center, and down the block on Hamlin, the former parish center is now Kelly Hall, a community outreach center born from a partnership between the Archdiocese of Chicago, the YMCA, and the Greater Chicago Food Depository. A central figure in this story is Franciscan Father Robert Lombardo, who, at the request of Cardinal George, came to Chicago in 2005 to establish a mission on the west side. Father Bob says the outreach means a lot to the community. The response we get from the people is extremely positive. They are very grateful that we are here. This neighborhood has severe needs and they, for whatever reason, were not able to be addressed adequately and we're coming in to assist. For example, right now, we are assisting 700 families a month with food, clothing, and household goods. So you could imagine people are extremely grateful. Now Father Bob has turned his attention to the church, closed for two decades and in need of extensive repairs. Thanks to fundraising and lots of volunteers, phase one of the church's renovation is well underway with hopes of reopening by Christmas. We're in difficult economic times, so I was very worried about taking this on as a project. Um, but with that said, people have come forward. It's just a miracle how people have come forward to help out. So the cooperation has been outstanding. Some of that cooperation comes from the unions, among them pipe fitters, plumbers, electricians, and carpenters. In what is described as a win-win situation, the church has been used as a hands-on training center where apprentices can perfect their trade. Uh, it was rewarding for me to uh, help out in the community that doesn't get much attention, uh, but it, it was good. The, all the apprentices appreciated the opportunity to work at the church and see a, a job all the way through. A lot of times it's just piecemeal but they all felt very good that they were able to uh, contribute to Our Lady of Angels. The church will not reopen as a parish, but there will be prayer services, adoration, special masses, and more community outreach. Sister Alicia Torres, one of five Franciscans of the Eucharist at the mission, gave us a tour of the soon-to-be-reopened church. We would like to um, have this as a memorial chapel for those who did die here in 1958 to kind of keep that memory alive. As you can see, we've got many people working on the sanctuary of the church right now, painting, cleaning marble, restoring all of the beautiful art that decorates this most primary part of the church. Now, this was used as a hall when the parish was fully functioning, and we would like to use it in a similar fashion as a center to gather the neighborhood. We want to have meals for the neighbors. We want to have Christmas parties, programs for the youth, programs to help strengthen families, to really help bring the beautiful values of our Catholic Church alive in ways that people can receive them to help to make positive choices in their lives. Even as fundraising efforts continue, the renovation pushes forward, creating an atmosphere of excitement and anticipation at the mission. People that are in my age group, the Over 50 Club, we know of a different type of church where it was thriving, vibrant, 
and that's not always terminology that's used right now. So when I see the Lord inspiring new life, it obviously gets me inspired. It gets me excited. It's something where you want to get out of bed and be able to serve the Lord. Father Bob's optimism is well reflected in the rebirth of Our Lady of the Angels as a mission, and the reopening of the church is just one more step in the mission's outreach to the community it serves. I'm Jim Dish, reporting for The Church, The Cardinal, and You. That's truly impressive. Cardinal, we have um, a phoenix in the Archdiocesan Crest, mm -hmm. and talk about rising from the ashes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, whenever there is hope, where before there was a kind of despair, that's a sign of God's presence. And uh, the renovation of the church is just the last piece in renovating all those uh, buildings, the convent and everything else, for the purpose of reaching out to the neighborhood, first of all, in the food kitchen and in other ways, but also to be a place of prayer for many people to come, the burgeoning small religious Franciscan community he started there. And the church is the most gracious building, the truly impressive building in that neighborhood. It would have been a shame to let that decay. And now we have a chance of having a genuine house of worship uh, where uh, before, you know, the, the, the place didn't lift the spirit very much. And so we think this might be possible, that dispirited people might find new spirit because the Holy Spirit is working there. Two things about that story that especially impress and touch me. One is the, uh, the unions uh, providing yeah. their apprentices yeah. Yeah. To, to do the work. Yeah. And the other is that there are two brand new communities that are mm -hmm. invigorating the life of this community, sure. the, the group of sisters yeah. and the group of friars. Yeah, I think that's the Holy Spirit. Whenever there's generosity, the Holy Spirit is there. You give your time and your effort and your expertise. They give their lives. Uh, Father Lombardo's a man of relationships, and that means he's in touch with the Spirit that keeps us all united. So I'm very grateful to him. Praise God. And to all those volunteers uh, for the wonderful way in which they've made their talents available yeah. for the poor.